The E-Move Cruiser is one of the best electric scooters under $1,500 or if you're in the UK, £1,250, period. Compounding monstrous range and load-bearing capabilities with a multitude of features including an IPX6 water resistance rating, telescopic stem and a choice of up to five colours, the Emu Cruiser is just as much fun as it looks. But with all that style, it doesn't mean that the Cruiser has overlooked substance. With semi-hydraulic brakes, silky spring suspension and plump car-grade air-filled tyres all combining to deliver a superb riding experience, the Cruiser delivers on all fronts. You won't have to break the bank to get your hands on it either. Welcome to Electric Scooter Insider. I'm Josh and I've been reviewing electric scooters for the last few years and it's my mission to help you choose the right electric scooter. So if you're here because you want the most substantial, complete, comprehensive review of the eMove Cruiser, sit back, strap in and enjoy. In this review, we're going to cover eight key areas. Who is it best for? The pros and cons value for money, alternatives, design, ride quality, performance and safety, and then we'll end on the extra features. Will the eMove Cruiser be a good fit for you? Well, the eMove Cruiser is that rare find in the electric scooter world, a machine that all riders can enjoy. Sure, it's single motor means it's not able to compete with the dual motor performance models when it comes to speed and acceleration. So if you are an adrenaline junkie, you may want to opt for the Apollo Ghost or Mantis Base for more speed at a similar price. Similarly, the E-Move Cruiser at 52 pounds, which is the equivalent to 23.6 kilograms, probably isn't the right fit for riders looking for a super portable model, nor is it made for off-roading. Don't get me wrong, the 10-inch air-filled tires provide a reasonable level of shock absorption on less even terrain. It's just that well-maintained urban roads are where the cruiser's wheels do their best work. But ultimately, the cruiser excels on so many metrics. Range, features, load, style, and the list goes on. And that's why it makes it impossible not to love, no matter what kind of rider you are. So with a price tag of $1,399 in the US and £1,249 in the UK, there is no better scooter on the market than the eMove Cruiser for its price point. So let's jump in. Let's start with the pros first. Well, it has an unparalleled range in its price class. It's supremely affordable. It has fantastic load bearing capabilities. It comes in five stunning colors, meaning you can personalize it to your own tastes. And you have a telescopic stem that allows you to customize the height of the handlebars, which means the scooter is more adept for different riders of different heights. It has a buttery smooth suspension system, foldable handlebars which make it much more compact, an IPX6 water resistance rating, and then for the cons. It has a single motor only, it's slightly too heavy to be considered as a commute scooter. I generally cap this at around 42 pounds, which is the equivalent to 19 kilos. The eMove Cruiser weighs 52 pounds, which is 23.6 kilos. And the final con here are that the hand grips have some wiggle in them once they've been folded and locked into place. Is it worth the price tag? Well, the eMove Cruiser offers so much bang for your buck that it would be a crime against humanity for me to say that it's not worth its price tag and this will become clear throughout the review. The Cruiser is worth every cent, nickel and dime, or if you're in the UK, penny of your money. 
For one, its impressive 62 miles of maximum range isn't just the best in its class. It also blows many more, more expensive models and feature-rich models out of the water. Names here include those such as the Wolf King, Apollo Phantom, and Mantis Pro. And these models are rarely absent from conversations about the industry's very best models but these pale in comparison to the cruiser's maximum range. Let's also not forget that the cruiser's price tag makes it one of the most affordable scooters going. Of course, there's no sugarcoat in the fact that the cruiser isn't the fastest model out there, but for a scooter that achieves an improbable blend of affordability, mileage, user friendliness, and even style, the eMove Cruiser is quite simply the best there is. What other scooters should you consider? Well, we have three to choose from here. I've handpicked these three based on the models that I think are gonna be either the best upgrades for the eMove Cruiser, so jumping from a single motor to a dual motor, and I've also chucked one of the model in there, which I think is a good uh, middle ground between getting a model that is lighter and more portable and better suited as a commuter scooter since it's closer to that 42 pound cap that I generally put on the weight of commuter scooters. So let's jump in and take a look. The first one on our list here is the very popular Mantis Base. Now this costs $1,649 in the US and in the UK it retails for £1,385. It has a top speed of 40 miles per hour, a maximum range of 30 miles. It weighs 65 pounds, which is the equivalent to 25.9 kilos, and it's able to support a rider weight of 265 pounds, which is the equivalent to 120 kilograms. Why is it better than the eMove Cruiser? Well, it's 10 miles per hour faster, its dual motors enable superior acceleration and hill climbing, and overall it does have a superior ride quality as well. Why is it worse than the eMove Cruiser? Well, it costs more. In the US, you're going to have to spend an extra $250 to get your hands on the Mantis Base, or if you're in the UK, that is an extra £136. It also has 32 less miles off its maximum range and it supports less rider weight and this equates to around 87 pounds which is around 40 kilograms. That is something you may want to bear in mind. It's also heavier. It's 13 pounds heavier so 5.9 kilos there and the Mantis base doesn't have a water resistance rating. Next up, we have the Apollo Ghost. Now this scooter retails for $1,499 in the US and it's also £1,499 in the UK. Now this scooter has a top speed of 34 miles per hour, a maximum range of 39 miles. It weighs 64 pounds, which is the equivalent to 29 kilograms. And it's able to support up to 300 pounds, which is the equivalent to 136 kilos. Why is it better than the eMove Cruiser? Well, it has a faster top speed of 34 miles per hour. It has adjustable suspension. And as a result of its dual 800 watt motors, it has a brutal acceleration rate that leaves the eMove Cruiser in the dust. Why is it worse than the eMove Cruiser? Well, it costs more. If you're in the US, you're gonna to have to spend an extra $100 to get your hands on it. Or if you're in the UK, an extra 250 pounds. It also has less range, so you can shave off 23 miles off of the eMove Cruiser's range. And that's the maximum range of the Apollo Ghost. You also have a heavier scooter with the Ghost, so it weighs 12 pounds more, which equates to around 5.4 kilos and it supports 52 pounds less rider weight, which again is the equivalent to 24 kilos. Next up, we have the VSET 8R, and this retails in the US for $1,399. It's not available in the UK, but the model that is a step down from it, the VSET 8 19.2 amp version is. 
and this scooter costs 795 pounds so you could save a little bit of cash here the only difference between the visa 8r and the visa 8 19.2 amp versions is in the mileage which i'll come to in a second so the top speed is 26 miles per hour the maximum range of the 8r is 42 miles and of the 19.2 amp version is 38 miles the weight of this scooter is 46 pounds which is the equivalent to 20.9 kilograms and both models can support up to 265 pounds which is 120 kilograms why is it better than the e-move cruiser well it's lighter six pounds lighter in fact which is the equivalent to around 2.7 kilograms it also uses an nfc key lock immobilizer to prevent theft as opposed to the traditional key lock ignition and it has adjustable suspension. So why is it worse than the eMove Cruiser? Well, it has 20 miles less range, a little bit more or less if you go for the VZ8 19.2 amp version. It's also four miles per hour slower and it supports less weight. So that's around 87 pounds, which is the equivalent to around 40 kilos. It also has less powerful brakes, so it uses drum brakes rather than semi-hydraulic disc brakes that are found on the cruiser. And it has a weaker motor, meaning it's not as adept at climbing hills. Tall, telescopic and teeming with several of the smartest features the scooter has to offer, the eMove Cruiser's handlebars are where its main attraction is. They are, of course, where you'll find key devices such as your QS S4 display, a small screen that provides insights into your speed, riding mode and distance traveled, which also doubles as your finger throttle for controlling the pace and acceleration of your scooter. You'll also be able to view your scooter's battery life via a built-in voltmeter and to unlock the scooter, you use the key start ignition. On the opposite side of the handlebars, you'll find the buttons for controlling the eMove Cruiser's horn, turn signals and headlight, while a pair of hand-operated brakes simultaneously serve both symmetry and stopping power. It's all there from an aesthetics point of view too, with the handlebars folding down neatly to aid storage and transport. In fact, the Cruiser's handlebars are a neat blend of not only portability, but customizability too. Via the telescopic stem, you can fix the handlebars at whichever height suits you best. And to top all of this off are snug, comfortable rubber hand grips. After all, there's a chance you'll be riding this thing for over 60 miles at a time, so you can't afford to pick up blisters. If there's one thing that you should know about the eMove Cruiser, and this applies to all electric scooters, is that the scooter is way bigger than it looks in the pictures. Because of how diminutive it can look in photos and perhaps because of the array of bright colors it comes in, you could be forgiven for mistaking the Cruiser for a conventional scooter, but I can reassure you that's not the case, particularly when you consider the eMove Cruiser's 30 miles per hour top speeds and the hawking 52 volt 30 amp LG battery that is concealed within the depths of its deck. As mentioned previously, the Cruiser comes in five colors, which encompass everything from the moderate black and white options to the more out there red, orange, and purple variations. My personal preference was the white model, so that's the one that I opted for. The eMove Cruiser's deck is wide, long, and easily large enough to strike a wide, comfortable stance while riding. It's also super sturdy. And as I'll get to shortly in the weight and load section of the review, this thing was, for a while, the leader in the load-bearing capacity rankings, able to support up to a mammoth 352 pounds of weight, which is the equivalent to 160 kilograms. However, the recent release of the Wolf King has taken that place as number one in the rankings and that scooter is able to support up to 400 pounds, which is the equivalent to 181 kilograms. Perhaps the only thing that the Cruiser's deck doesn't have in spades though is grip. 
Unlike the premium models in the new V-Set line of electric scooters, whose decks are covered in a veneer of easy to clean silicon, the Cruiser only has two slim strips of sandpapery grip tape similar to what's on the V-Set 8's cheaper 8 and 8R models. While this dual column design is just enough to offer a level of sufficient grip while riding, I much prefer to see the entirety of the deck covered in grip tape or rubber. Boasting chunky air-filled 10-inch car grade tires, the eMove Cruiser is well equipped to deliver maximum rider comfort. I mean, just look at the size of these things. The Cruiser's jumbo tires remind us that despite its colorful, playful design of its frame, this scooter belongs to an entirely different class of electric scooters to the Unagis, Segway 9Bots, Turbo Ants and High Boys of this world. The wheels of the Cruiser don't belong to a commute scooter. They belong to a machine that has been designed to annihilate urban terrain and handle any potholes and pitfalls that roads can throw at you. Plus, it's worth circling back to the point that the Cruiser's tires are air-filled rather than being solid rubber. And while it makes them more liable to punctures than their solid counterparts, it does mean they provide the utmost level of impact absorption. Working in tandem with the Cruiser's large dual front springs and rear air shocks, they offer traction and stability and ensure you enjoy a seamless, comfortable ride every time you push off. The eMove Cruiser's frame is made from a lightweight yet extremely durable aluminium alloy. Rubber and reinforced plastic have been used for some of the scooter's more cosmetic parts, such as the hand grips and mug guards. Materials aside, it's clear that from a design standpoint, the Cruiser has been built to last. The mechanism securing its folding handlebars and telescopic stem are smooth to operate, while the savvy S-knob controlling the stem's folding feature is super secure. Perhaps my only gripe when it comes to the Cruiser's blueprint is the lack of grippy rubber or silicon surface covering the deck which I mentioned earlier. Despite this, the Cruiser still offers plenty to get excited about when it comes to all-round robustness and reliability. Its water resistance rating of IPX6 is just about the best you'll see on any electric scooter of its class and price point, meaning the Cruiser's well-placed to weather the storms of everyday use. The eMove Cruiser weighs in at 52 pounds, which is the equivalent to 23.6 kilograms. This is about standard for a scooter of its price, specs and extra features. And while this makes the Cruiser a little too heavy for me to recommend it wholeheartedly as a commute scooter, it's still great for zipping you from A to B. The more seriously impressive thing about the eMove Cruiser though is its load bearing capacity. The Cruiser can support up to 352 pounds, which is 160 kilos, which makes it the second best in our database for over 100 models as far as load is concerned. The only other scooter to top this is Caboose Wolf King, which can support up to 400 pounds, which equates to 181 kilograms. Both the cruiser's stem and handlebars fold, making the scooter highly portable and extremely easy to store when not in use. The stem folds via a small S-knob mechanism located on the arc of the neck where the stem meets the deck. And this innovative method is unique to the cruiser and locks the scooter in place when both upright and folded. This means you can feel secure when riding, knowing that the stem isn't going to collapse in on you, while also making the Cruiser easier to lift and carry. Despite the Cruiser being relatively light for its class, it's still not the slimmest number. So you're unlikely to be wanting to lift this thing on and off public transport or lugging it up flights of stairs regularly. Is the eMove Cruiser comfortable to ride? Yes, the eMove Cruiser is one of the most comfortable rides on the market 
for urban terrain. With the front coil springs complementing the rear air shocks, the Cruiser is tailor-made to prioritize rider comfort. Sure, you won't be able to adjust the scooter suspension in the same way that you can with Apollo's models or any of the new V-Set lineup. However, it's unlikely that you're going to need to do that. The Cruiser is made for urban environments after all, so if you stick to well-maintained roads and paths and sidewalks, you'll have zero issues. The brakes are also extremely responsive, which instill further confidence while riding. The only area that would benefit from improvement is if the handlebars were to screw into place as opposed to just sliding over the folding mechanism. Because the handlebars aren't locked into place fully, you tend to experience a little wiggle room in both hand grips. However, from my test rides over the past few months, I haven't encountered any problems and the handlebars stay clicked into place and they don't fold under pressure. While the E-Move Cruiser is by no means snail-like in the top speed that it offers, its skill set is weighted significantly more to range than velocity. From my tests, I found that the Cruiser is capable of speeds of as high as 30 miles per hour. But how does that compare to its closest competitors? Well, let's take a look. Taking the Cruiser's $1,399 price tag and applying a $250 price range on either side, this gives us 22 comparable models when it comes to price. As far as speed is concerned, the Cruiser plays is pretty much smack bang in the middle of the pack. While the Cruiser's 30 miles per hour top speed manages to beat out some of the finest scooters in its niche, including the Mantis 8 Base, the V-Set 9R and the Inokim Ox Hero, it fails to rank highly. This is mainly down to the Cruiser's lack of dual motors that most scooters outstripping it for pace have. Case in point, the Vala Eagle One and Mantis Base. While these are respectively $200 and $250 more expensive than the Cruiser, they manage to offer asphalt scorching speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. If sheer speed is at the top of your agenda, either of these will meet your needs particularly the Mantis Base, which boasts a brutal acceleration rate of zero to 15 miles per hour in just two and a half seconds. Other winners in the E-Move Cruiser's speed and price comparison category are the Apollo Ghost, which courtesy of its dual 800 watt motors can reach speeds of up to 34 miles per hour and the full complement of V-Set's nine plus models, which can all hit 33 miles per hour. It's also easy for you adrenaline junkies out there to know which scooters in the cruiser's bracket to avoid. Here, that includes the Inokim Quick 4 Super and the slowest of the bunch, the Inokim Quick 3, which with a sloppy sloth like 90 miles per hour is anything but what its moniker suggests. For those of you watching in the UK, the lineup of scooters in the E-Move Cruiser's price class, so a 500 pound bracket, is a little different since not all models in the US are available in the UK. So the results here of the fastest scooter are the Mantis Base, followed by the Zero 10X 52 volt and the Apollo Ghost. The E-Move Cruiser's top speed is also in the middle of the pack when it comes to scooters in a comparable weight bracket of between 47 and 57 pounds. As it turns out, the fastest scooters in the Cruiser's weight class comes courtesy of the impressive V-Set 9 Plus range with 33 miles per hour. Then we have the popular Dualtron Mini with 32 miles per hour and clinching the last podium positions of the cruiser's speed and weight comparison division are the Apollo Explore, Zero 010, Evolve Tour XLR, and all of these models can hit 31 miles per hour. 
Again, for those of you that are watching in the UK, the results of the comparison here, which uses a five kilogram range instead of the 10 pound range, is somewhat in line with the US comparison and results, where the VSET 9 Plus R takes the glory with its dual 650 watt motors and a top speed of 33 miles per hour. While the eMove Cruiser doesn't get off the mark quite as quickly as the scooters that I recommend as alternatives, it's still capable of reaching 15 miles per hour from stationary in just 3.4 seconds and then 25 miles per hour in only 7.6 seconds more. The Apollo Ghost, on the other hand, boasts the best acceleration rate from 0 to 15 miles per hour and it can do this in just 2.3 seconds. However, the Mantis Base is the superior scooter when it comes to reaching 25 miles per hour. The Visa 8R, on the other hand, is the most sluggish accelerator in this category because like the Cruiser, it's built with just a single motor and prioritizes range rather than acceleration and speed. As I've alluded to already, mileage is the eMove Cruiser's strong suit. With a maximum range of 62 miles, the Cruiser is simply unparalleled in its price and weight class. So let's dig deeper. Out of the 22 comparable models in the eMove Cruiser's price class, the scooter quite predictably tops the charts. Impressively so too. The next best model is the Inakim Quick 4 Super with 43 miles, which is a whopping 90 miles inferior to what the Cruiser offers. The AR is also six pounds lighter than the Cruiser, making it ideal for riders looking for a more portable scooter. But bear in mind, the 8R has a 48 volt 600 watt motor that is significantly smaller than the 52 volt 1000 watt motor of the Cruiser, so it's not as fast. So those are the results from our comparison of the scooters that are available in the US, but when we look at the pool of electric scooters that are available in the UK, the results differ. The eMove Cruiser remains as the reigning model, but this time it is followed in the rankings by the Inakim Ox Super with its 56 mile range. Or if you like the sound of the Visa AR, you could opt to pick up the Visa A 19.2 amp version, which has a 38 mile range and is the highest spec 8 model available in the UK. When comparing the eMove Cruiser's range, to its competitors in terms of weight, the scooter is as equally unstoppable. Out of a comparable 16 models, the Cruiser yet again seizes gold. Despite it being $100 more expensive than the table topping Cruiser, the Inakim Quick 4 Super comes the closest, but by not too much. To round up, it's a V-set model taking the bronze, and this time it's the 9 Plus R, which balances a strong, 40 mile range against an affordable $1,624 price point. The VSET 9 Plus R is another great alternative for anyone looking for a scooter that packs more punch than the Cruiser, as well as one that has a decent mileage. It offers superb ride quality while retaining a weight that makes it easy to store and transport. Plus, it's available in the UK too, costing just £1,250. You can also check out my review of the 9 Plus R either on the YouTube channel or you can come over to electricscooterinsider.com where we have a full written review there as well. And just for clarity, the results shown in this comparison are the same for the electric scooters that are available in the UK.
It's not only long distances that the eMove Cruiser specializes in, it's hills as well. The 1,600 watt peak output of the Cruiser's 1,000 watt motor enables it to mount hills of up to 20 degrees. Despite boasting just a single motor alone, my test found that the scooter performs surprisingly well on even some of the longest, more challenging uphill routes. Naturally, the best hill climbers in the cruiser's price class are those with the dual motor setup, just as the Mantis Base and the Violet Eagle one dominated our rankings when it came to speed versus price and acceleration, these scooters both also excel where hill climbing is concerned. Both can tackle even the most imposing urban inclines with ease and should be your first port of call if hill climbing capability is high on your agenda. The eMove Cruiser derives its admirable shock absorption capabilities from two large springs at the front and air shocks at the rear. While the cruiser suspension sadly isn't adjustable, it makes for a buttery smooth riding experience as long as you stick to urban terrain. It's well equipped to handle the bumps, potholes and other everyday nuisances that you can come to expect in urban environments. Plus, while the cruiser, if pushed, can cope with less demanding off-road terrain, it hasn't been designed for forest or dirt trails. Flat, well-paved asphalt and concrete roads are where you'll get the best performance from the cruiser. The eMove Cruiser rocks front and rear 140 mm semi-hydraulic disc brakes that allow you to come to a complete stop within just 3.4 meters when traveling at 15 miles per hour. What's impressive about the Cruiser's hybrid braking setup is that it's not something we normally see on scooters in its class. While all similarly priced scooters have dual braking systems, only a handful have hydraulic brakes the Cruiser of course being one of them. The only other scooters in the Cruiser's prize class to harness hydraulics for stopping power are the Vala Eagle One with its full hydraulics and the Mantis Base with its semi-hydraulics. The only potential downside is that unlike other scooters in its class, the eMove Cruiser doesn't come equipped with a proper anti-lock braking system, otherwise known as ABS. As to be expected, this can leave the wheels prone to locking up when stopping suddenly, so it's always best to try and squeeze the hand-operated brakes as gently as you can when coming to a halt. The eMove Cruiser takes between 9 and 12 hours to charge. You'll find its charging port located on the right side of the deck and it's protected by a dust cap. It's simple to find and plug into, just be wary not to overcharge it as this can shorten the lifespan of the battery if done regularly. The Cruiser's charge time is about what you would expect for a scooter in its class. Perhaps the one drawback and I'm aware I might be nitpicking here, is that it lacks an additional charge port. Most top electric scooters double up on the charge ports, meaning you can plug an extra charger in to drive the charge time down. Also, unlike some of these scooters, the Cruiser doesn't offer a fast charger, which can get batteries juiced up two or three times faster than their regular counterparts. On the plus side though, you at least won't have to shell out for an extra charger when you opt for the Cruiser. And let's not forget that the Cruiser's range is insane, so you'll be spending more time riding it than you will charging it. Could you call this model the eMove Cruiser if it couldn't cruise? No. So it's good to see that this model does indeed boast cruise control, although I'd certainly expect this relatively widespread feature to be included as standard on a scooter of the cruiser's class, as well as cheaper scooters. You can activate the cruise control by navigating to the P17 setting on the QS S4 display. Once engaged, it will allow you to maintain a constant speed without having to keep the finger throttle 
pulled down. Normally, I don't shout too loud about cruise control being a feature, but on the cruiser, it is vital. After all, this scooter can travel up to a maximum of 62 miles off a single charge, and trigger throttles aren't the most user friendly. The eMove Cruiser comes with a powerful front headlight located at the bottom of the stem, just above the front fender. And it also has a couple of button lights embedded into the fore of the deck. At the rear, you'll find its turn signals and a tail light that has been molded into the reinforced black plastic of the rear mug guard. This flashes when you brake, so it's useful for letting traffic and pedestrians know when you're coming to a stop. All in all, the LED setup is about what you would expect for a scooter of its price point. While it doesn't boast all the bells and whistles of something like the Dualtron Eagle Pro, which sports customizable, color changing, kaleidoscopic patterns of shifting light rippling up and down its stem, the cruiser's lights are still bright enough for nighttime riding. Despite this, I always recommend grabbing an additional headlight to attach to your handlebars for enhanced visibility. To the left side of the handlebars, sandwiched between the front headlight button above and the horn below is a black slider. This activates the cruiser's turn signals. These are super easy to turn on and unlike with several other scooters that also boast turn signals, the cruiser emits an audible beep so you'll know when the turn signals are engaged. Speaking of other scooters with turn signals, there aren't that many. Sure, the entire V-Set range has them, as does the Apollo Phantom, but beyond that, turn signals on scooters, especially those that come included as standard rather than add-on extras, are frustratingly rare. The turn signals themselves are embedded into the deck with a triangular wraparound design that allows them to be seen from both the rear and the side of the scooter. Part of the reason why the eMove Cruiser is capable of achieving such long distance rides is because of its 1560 watt hour capacity of its 52 volt 30 amp LG battery, which is stored within its deck. Supporting this, however, is an additional layer of protection known as a battery management system. This is a kind of electronic circuit that regulates the cruiser's battery pack by monitoring the flow of electricity in and out of the battery. This helps to prevent against overcharging by off-cutting the power when the scooter is fully juiced up and it prevents the subsequent damage that overcharging and overheating can cause to the long-term health of your battery. Ultimately, it ensures that you'll always enjoy the maximum capacity of the huge battery. For an extra 65 bucks if you are in the US or 59 pounds in the UK, you can score yourself an attachable seat for the eMove Cruiser. With a fully adjustable height plus a simple four-step installation process, this seat is a great investment, particularly if you're committed to pushing the cruiser to its limits of its 62 mile range. It's big, it's plush, and it's comfortable. And that wraps up the review of the eMove Cruiser. If you liked what you saw, you can either pick it up by scanning this QR code here, or clicking the links in the description. I'll also make sure to provide links for all of the scooters that I've recommended as alternatives. And if you need any more information, why not head over to electricscooterinsider.com where we have a bunch of reviews and guides. If you found value from this review, do me a favor, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel to become an electric scooter insider. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.